Right, so we're off on our first day out in our van. Thank you. Smile! Well, we didn't expect this, did we? <laughs> Traffic jam already. In 900 feet, at the roundabout, take the second exit onto A149, Queen Elizabeth Way. So, let's talk a little bit about the van. Now, viewers to the channel will know that we've been looking for something for, it's probably getting on for about 12 months. And we weren't sure in the early days what we were going to get. Uh, did we want a motorhome? Did we want a camper van? Or was a day van going to be good enough for what we needed? In fact, a day van was perfect. Our channel is about our days out, obviously, and it's called Our Days Out. So we wanted a van that we could take anywhere, into towns, into cities, into the countryside, park it up anywhere without it being suspicious as a camper van, if you like. So we started to look around at different kinds of vans and get some ideas of what we may well want. Now, there are plenty of vans out there that have already been converted, but because we didn't have a requirement for lots of units in the van, we were going to go for comfort. And after quite a bit of research uh, and some advice, somebody put us on to Japanese imports. And there are two most popular, there are two Japanese imports that are pretty popular. One is the Nissan El Grand, and the other one is the Toyota Alphard. We have got the Toyota Alphard. It's a 2.4 petrol engine, and it's automatic, which is perfect. It comes pretty well specced with a reversing camera, with parking sensors, with uh, electric fold-in mirrors. It has air conditioning throughout, that's front and rear. It has heating throughout, front and rear, which is also thermostatically controlled, which is perfect. It has a drop-down TV with a DVD player and also plays from an SD card. Now, the only requirement we had was that we wanted a kitchen pod um, and some of the seats were going to be removed. One of the options was to take it to a specialist and get the work done. But due to COVID and the amount of people that are now getting camper vans, motorhomes and the like, and getting particularly vehicles converted, the waiting list was going to be far too long. So I decided I'd have a go myself. I mean, how difficult can it be? Anyway, the first thing I had to do was remove some of the seats. And because the kitchen pod was going to go on the passenger side of the vehicle, so that the habitation door, if you like, was on the left-hand side of the vehicle, which is fairly standard, for example, if you stop in a lay-by, you don't want to be stepping out on the traffic side. So the kitchen pod, we decided, was going to go on the left-hand side, just behind the sliding door, which is also automatic, which is fantastic. Anyway, the, what had to be done was uh, some of the seats removed, and it's now a five-seater, all seat belted, which is perfect. In a seven-seater I had in the past, the seats just clipped out, you know, which was fairly simple. It didn't work that way with the Toyota Alphard. The seats had to be unbolted, and once they were unbolted, it left some upstanchions, if you like, in the floor connected to some metal running rails quite deep into the floor connected to the subfloor below all of the insulation. So that was a task itself, much worse than I imagined it was going to be because I didn't want to damage the rest of the floor. So what I did first was remove part of the, the uh, remove the seats, I should say, remove the tracking, and then use the big gap and you can see the gap here that was left by the runners the metal runners in the floor and i utilized those by putting timber in there that i was going to put a plywood floor onto to bring it up to the same level as a carpet as you can see here now once that was done it was quite tricky some pretty tricky cuts as you can see but i was very pleased with the progress i was making so far and the next thing i was going to do was to install a laminate type self-adhesive floor which you can see in these pictures here now that gave us two separate sides of the van, if you like. A third of the side was for the entrance door and for the kitchen pod and was waterproof if anything was spilt. The two thirds on the right hand side looking from the rear were for the seating. And by the way, those two seats lay down flat to make a larger than normal single bed, which I will be using on the odd occasion. 
Anyway, once that was done, it was time for me to work out what I was going to do with the kitchen pod. So I started work on that. I'd never done anything like this before, although I am quite handy. And I got the parts that I needed. And here I am making the front of the kitchen pod. And here are the doors. And then it was a case of getting the aluminium corner connectors, uh, which make it fairly simple to assemble it, which I did. And I put all the pop around edging on the doors and other parts of the unit and then put it in place. That took some pretty intricate cutting as well to get it seated level and the way I wanted it. But I was happy with that. And then the next thing was to get a nice worktop on it. And we wanted white and we got this great material here, which is uh, waterproof, obviously. I then fitted the uh, latches to the doors, which was another challenge. Anyway, they went in okay. And the whole thing, I think, looks fantastic. So we look forward to many trips out in the van. And of course, we have everything we would need for a day and at a push, two days. We do have a porta potty in it. We have a sink. We have a gas hob that we can use either in the vehicle or outside the vehicle. And um, yeah, it's all turned out perfect. <laughs> Disappointing. It's raining. Again. Thank you. Right, Suzanne, fish and chips for the first time, oh, and sausage and chips for you in the van. Yeah. Ooh, nice chips. Yeah. What was the chip shop called? Oh, Frenchies, Frenchies. isn't it? Frenchies. Right, and I have fish and chips. Let's have a look. Very nice. Cheers. Well, we've decided to cut our losses here in Wells next to sea because it keeps chucking it down with rain, so I can't do any filming. Can I? No. Nope. Shall we hightail it along the coast to Hunstanton? Yeah, you can do. Came down to it a few years ago, didn't we? Yeah. And we've been in it. It was 
friends that had it. I don't know if they've still got it, have they? I don't know. But yeah, we went in there and it was... Uh, it's nice it was looking nice. out onto the sea. You can see across to Skegness. From you went right up the top, didn't you? Yeah. Well, this is where I was hoping to come across to Hunstanton and get the drone out, but I don't think so. So we get to Hunstanton, Suzanne, and the sun comes out. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a bit of a joke. Sweetness. Chocolate cake. <laughs> So we set out this morning to go to wells uh, near the sea, didn't we? Next to sea. Next to sea, with lots of plans to do our first vlog in three months. Get the drone up and uh, basically do quite a bit of filming in the new van. Unfortunately, it was dreadful. And it wind was icy. Yeah, and it wasn't forecast, it was supposed to be quite sunny and uh, with a gentle breeze with a gentle breeze so we came down the coast a bit to Hunstanton and now look at it it's uh, quarter past four in the afternoon whoops that's a bit bumpy and look at it now can't even cut this cake look can't cut it <laughs> maybe you're not meant to maybe you're meant to just bite it I'm sure you will that's it yeah, so it's been a bit of a disappointment really, like I said, but um, I'm going to try, maybe, and just get the drone up for a while.
too wet to do anything so we made our way to Hunstan and it started to brighten up didn't it? A little bit yeah. So I did manage to get the drone out as you will have seen um, but there's always another day. We wanted to try the van out and it's been fantastic I'm really pleased with it. I think you are too aren't you? Yeah. Yeah it's great. Really comfortable everything we need so Yeah, so I look forward to the next trip out and hopefully we'll be able to uh, do a lot more filming. Other than that, we have enjoyed it and yeah, look forward to the next time. Anything you want to say? I'm tired. <laughs> You're tired? Yeah, well, it's going to be another hour and a half, I would think, before we do get home. So then you can get cosied up in bed. In my bed? Yeah. It's getting on for seven o'clock now, so yeah. So, uh, may even stop off and have a cup of tea. See how it goes. <laughs>